strength in you. I put my love, the love of Jesus Christ, shed abroad in our hearts. We pour out love today on you. We pour out peace today on you. We pour out joy today on you. We pour out this long suffering on you. Hallelujah. Even as Jesus, hallelujah, was long suffering to give us, hallelujah, everlasting life. It was the eternal life that he desired to go forth long, hallelujah, whatever it took, hallelujah, to give us this eternal life. And it's in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Thank you for this life, Holy Spirit. We receive it. God, we thank you, Lord God. Out of our hearts, the love of God is shed abroad. Thank you, Lord Father, for this mighty work of your spirit today. Oh God, we thank you for your presence. In your presence is the fullness of joy. Thy right hand is so much pleasure forevermore. So we just release an atmosphere conducive, God. Holy Spirit, that the fruit of the spirit would have no limitations today, none. Lord God, we thank you for the angels of glory ascending and descending all around the premises, Lord Father. Glory to God. Father, we thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for this city and thank you for this state and nation. Holy Spirit, that your presence is with us always. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for releasing your glory. Father, oh, that you would turn the hearts of your people towards you, God. Oh, that you would revive them, God, to the fullness of everything that you have set up for us. Holy Spirit, that we would need nothing, God. We would need nothing, Holy Spirit, but that we would be recipients of your divine nature. Hallelujah. Your nature is that we receive it through the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. You're welcome. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. Now move in the hearts and your minds of your people and reveal Jesus. Reveal Jesus like they've never seen Jesus before. Hallelujah. It's the revealing of our Christ. Hallelujah. That brings forth the revelation. Hallelujah. Of who you are. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. The Holy Spirit will reveal. The revealing of the Spirit will reveal. Thank you, Lord. Your purpose. Hallelujah. Why are you here? Why are you still here? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Nobody can pluck you out of his hands. You're still here. Hallelujah. You escaped the corruption. Glory to God. You escaped the pandemic. Hallelujah. It's because there's purpose, there's existence for you to be here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for the anointing. Oh, God, we thank you for this precious anointing, Lord God, that keeps our hearts and our minds and keeps us in this joy, this framework of joy in knowing you, Christ. is amazing. Hallelujah. We pour out this joy. Hallelujah. You can't find this joy in material things. You can't find it in people. This type of joy is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. He has enough of it for all the world. Hallelujah. Thank you for this joy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, we honor you. We magnify your name, Jesus. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord Father. You have been, you have been our rock our refuge, our very present help in the time of need. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You have been our satisfier, our sanctifier, our redeemer, our Lord. That's why we look to the rock that is higher than us, because you perform all things for us. You love us like that. Hallelujah. Thank you for loving us, Holy Spirit. Oh God, we thank you, Jesus.
Jesus. Oh, we give you praise and we give you honor. You are the first and the last. You're the beginning and the end. Hallelujah. You are the self-existing God. You need no other to stay alive. You're the boss. You are it. <laughs> hallelujah. You answer to nobody. Oh, hallelujah. What a God that we serve that answers to nobody. Give him praise in the highest form, in the highest form. Hallelujah. That's the daddy that we have. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That's our daddy. Hallelujah. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he is. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. You're so wonderful. Thank you for saturating our hearts today. Lord, thank you for saturating our hearts with this peace. That peace that passes all understanding that keeps our heart and our minds. We thank you for that. And the God of hope shall fill us with all joy and peace and believing that we may find peace and hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. It is the power of the Holy Spirit that brings forth, hallelujah, this gift. Hallelujah. Thank God for shalom. Ah, amen. Glory to God. Jehovah Rapha. Hallelujah. He's our healer. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. How about Jehovah Jireh? Hallelujah. He's our provider. Oh, thank you, Lord. El Deniah, our master. He's our master. Hallelujah. He's amazing master. Elohim, ah, Elohim, Emmanuel. Oh, let God be with us all the time. Hallelujah. You know, he said, I never leave you, nor forsake you. Hallelujah. You know, he's with you always, even though you can't see him. He, he's there. He said it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He's not a God that would lie, neither the son of man, that he will repent. If he said it, he will do it. If he spoke it, he going to make that thing good. Hallelujah. Just receive him in your heart. Even if you don't see him, you know he's in your heart because your heart just melted. Hallelujah. With so much peace. And you know, nobody can do that. Do supernatural heart surgery. Hallelujah. To settle you down. That is a great feeling. Hallelujah. There's so much turmoil going all around you. And all of a sudden you have so much peace. You don't even know how. Hallelujah, that's the supernatural encounter of our God. He's supernatural. Hallelujah. That he may be glorified. Hallelujah. Thank you for the intimacy, Holy Spirit, today. God, we thank you for your presence. Oh, Lord, it's like a download from heaven. The heavens are open up today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We receive his peace. Welcome. Hallelujah. We welcome everyone. Hallelujah. In our service today in the parking lot and everyone that's online. Hallelujah. We thank God for his manifold graces. And we pray, hallelujah, that our pastor receives the word like fire. Amen. Glory to God. That word that gives him the divine ability. Hallelujah. To deliver that word, Lord Father with so much grace, amen, and mercy, and that we feel the anointing, Lord God, that brings about a transformation. That's what we want, a transformation of his glory. And we thank God for our healing today. We thank God for a mighty deliverance today. We thank God, hallelujah, because the Lord is our shepherd. Hallelujah, and we give you praise. Hallelujah, thank God. Good morning. It's good to see you this morning. Good to see your faces. And for those online, we, we just pray that you will hear something this morning uh, that blesses you and that enriches your day and the days to come. This morning, as we contemplate our communion, we're going to take a few minutes and just look at the, uh, the topic of unity. And uh, 
we're thinking about unity in three basic uh, facets, the power of unity, the purpose of unity, and the means to unity. Let's start with the power of unity, and we're going to use a little bit of a negative example from the Bible, but it uh, gives you a good illustration. It's about the Tower of Babel. Remember at that time in the earth there was one language, so the people were unified in their ability to communicate. And as man is wont to do, they wanted to go out and make a city and build a tower to the heavens, basically to celebrate themselves. Uh, so, you know, this is going to be a little exercise in idolatry. But look at what the Lord said concerning that. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building. The Lord said, if as one people speaking the same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Here the Lord is, is letting us know uh, the strength, the power of unity. And if God would come down and, and make a direct uh, intervention from heaven because of the power of unity operating in, in flesh and in self, selfishness and in idolatry, how much more would he come down with a direct response from heaven if we're unified around the things of God and the principles of the kingdom of God? Amen. Moving on to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul is uh, explaining uh, some of the giftings of the Holy Spirit. He's giving uh, the, the uh, instruction that the, the Corinthian church needs to understand the powers that God has released to them and given them authority in. Uh, one of the first things he says to them is, now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. Each one, every one of you, if you're a believer in Christ this morning, is gifted by the Spirit of God. And he goes on to explain uh, that these giftings are, are, are absolutely necessary and essential. Although they are different, they operate for one purpose. Uh, let's go to verse 20, uh, 21, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 21. It says, The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are un um, unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. The core principle here, uh, the core unifying principle here is the body of Christ. Um, you know, the Lord would have us to, to consider something here. First of all, this is about being sensitive to each other. We live in a world of packaged Christianity. Uh, people sell their seminars, they sell their books, uh, they sell their ministry. Uh, they claim you're going to be more blessed if you put money in their offering plate <laughs> and, uh, you know, so on and so forth. It's packaged just like uh, any other commodity. But the Lord is, is, is saying here that there, there needs to be a, a different mindset among us. We need to be mindful that it's, first of all, not just about us, but it's about our brothers and sisters around us, and it's about the world that we're supposed to be interfacing with. And the other thing is that we're totally uh, interdependent. Um, the scripture indicates that Jesus had the spirit without measure, but the scripture in 1 Corinthians also indicates that, that the Holy Spirit measures out giftings to us. He determines who has what gift, and he's the one that activates the gifts at any given point in time when it comes to these particular gifts that are listed here in chapter 12. So guess what? I don't have everything immediately at my disposal. I have the Holy Spirit within me. I have the fullness of the Holy Spirit within me. He's totally unlimited, but God has designed this body, this family, so that I don't get to run away and do my unlimited thing without you. I need you. I need you. I need every one of you in order to reach my full potential. You all need each other to reach your full potential, and God has designed it that way. Um, you know, the, the, the Lord would have us uh, consider what, what Paul said to the Corinthian church earlier on. He, he uh, got on their case a little bit about factions, uh, about chasing after personalities. You know, one is of, of Paul, one is of Apollos. 
And Paul made it clear. He says, you know, one person uh, uh, sows, another person waters, but it's God who gives the increase. Right now, our nation is under tremendous duress because people are chasing after personalities. People are chasing, some people are caught up, millions of them really, in a cult of personality. And some of them are believers. Some of them are Christians who are chasing wolves in sheep's clothing because they've forgotten or have not paid attention to the unifying principles of the body of Christ. And they're chasing after someone other than Jesus Christ. Uh, let's move on to the book of Ephesians. And again, Paul is speaking here to the Ephesian church. And uh, we start with verse, oh, let's see, let's see, where's a good place to start? Ephesians 4. And uh, 13. Let me find that on the small print here. <laughs> well, let me go back up a little bit. Let's go to verse 7 so it makes a little more sense. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. What does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to a whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. First of all, God has equipped the whole body to function in ministry. And it says here that if we're unified, we're going to mature into the fullness of what what uh, Christ means for us. We're going to walk like him, talk like him, look like him. We're going to have the, the wisdom that he had. We're going to show the compassion that he showed. We're going to walk in the authority that he walked in, and we'll do the works that he did. Here's our charge before we take of the, of the cup. And it goes back to verse 3 of this chapter. It says, make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Our sister mentioned peace and prayer. Peace is the glue that holds, holds us all together. And all of us have the peace of God. He says, my peace I leave with you. And it's a peace that the world can't take from you. It's a peace that transcends the kind of peace that the world knows. So we have that. That unity is rooted in the spirit of God, not in the flesh of man. We don't evaluate each other based on our, our, our wealth, our looks, our social status, uh, you know, what kind of car we drive, what neighborhood we live in, or nothing like that. It's about the spirit of God where we're unified. And here's our charge for this morning before we take of the cup. There is one body, one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. And I'm going to say something about that baptism, that one baptism is a two-pronged thing. The Holy Spirit baptizes you into Christ, and at the same time, Jesus baptizes you into the Holy Spirit. He infuses you with the Holy Spirit. That one baptism basically shows the unity of God. See, we can't get God without getting the Son and the Holy Spirit. It's a package deal. They all come together. Jesus said, I and the Father are one. Uh, no man comes into the Father but by me. The book of Romans says if you don't have uh, the, 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 the Holy Spirit, you're not a believer. They all come together we should all come together. So as we take of the cup and the bread this morning, let's remember that God has put us together as a unified whole. He's designed us to work with interdependence. He's designed us to, to be mindful and caring towards each other. He's designed us to be sensitive and compassionate towards one another and to the world around us. And he's given us the power to be able to do so. So with that in mind, let's take of the bread And let's take of the cup, which represents Jesus' shed blood on our behalf. He shed blood that we might be unified. Let's take of the cup.
And we give God thanks for all he has done and all that he is doing in Jesus' name.
Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a shout this morning. Come on, you could do better than that. I didn't say give it to me. I said give the Lord a shout of praise. Hey! Glory to God. The word of God is very clear. Praise is comely for the upright. Hallelujah. Amen. If you've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb and you know it, amen, then praise is a part of your lifestyle. Amen. You never have to be ashamed of praising God because he's not ashamed of you. Amen. So uh, we thank God for his wonderful, wonderful, outstanding Love and provision uh, to us as his people. Amen. And there's no people like the people of God who've been redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. I just like to uh, make an announcement this morning uh, to the Spirit Life body uh, as we welcome all of you this morning. And we're so glad that. You've been so uh, patient, and you've been so uh, consistent and uh, faithful uh, to the uh, parking lot services, this drive-in services. We thank God for you, and um, we want to make sure that everyone in the congregation is, is healed and safe, and so if there's anyone you know uh, within... Uh, the congregation that's having any type of uh, uh, physical um, crises or financial crises, uh, please call the office at 302-764-9673, 302-764-WORD. And um, if you call in, uh, we will get back to you. Uh, because we want to make sure in this season that uh, if you're struggling with anything, that there is assistance. Uh, we're going to uh, pray the prayer of faith and agreement for um, Mother Catherine this morning, uh, Sister uh, Catherine uh, Irvin, um, who is in uh, Christiana Hospital. I believe Mom Irvin is in her 80s. Is, you know what? I think it's 86. Somewhere. Well, whatever. Amen. Um, we're praying for her healing and uh, a quick uh, manifestation in her body because we, uh, we know healing belongs to us. So uh, before we go any further in service, uh, let's just agree uh, for the, the healing and the well-being of, of any of those who are part of this ministry uh, that would have any ailment or any uh, financial crises uh, at this time. Father, we thank you that you are the God of all mercies. You are the, the God of all comfort. And you've promised to lift us up by way of your precious word. And so we send the word to Mom Catherine this morning. And we thank you that according to Psalms 107 and 20, the word being sent manifested a healing and delivered your people from all manner of destruction. We speak to that infirmity, to that disease. We command you to go. And we thank you that, doubting not, we believe the things that we're saying are happening right now. Your word says we have what we say. And so we thank you for the healing, the restoration. We thank you, Lord, for uh, any others that would be harassed by the enemy at this time. We thank you, Lord, that there would be a manifestation of your spirit in their life of healing of restoration 
And we thank you, Lord, that all things are possible as we let your word be one with our flesh. As the word is engrafted and tattooed on our heart, nothing is impossible. You said if we abide in you and your words abide in us, we can ask what we will. And it would be done unto us that the Father would be glorified that we would bring forth much fruit. We also hold up Brother Fletcher today, Brother Charles Fletcher, and we thank you for the miracle that is being wrought in his body. We thank you, Lord, that uh, the infirmities, the sickness, the diseases that have tried to plague him, we thank you, Lord, that they are a thing of the past. And you are arising and every enemy is being scattered. And so we thank you for the faithfulness of your word. Lord, you are faithful and true. And we can always count on you. And so we thank you that you would uh, cause me now to decrease so that you can increase. Think through my mind, speak through my vocal cords, the words of life and healing and peace and restoration and encourage your people to go forward and if necessary to even uh, take back what the enemy has stolen. Thank you, Lord. You said you would show us the path of life and you said it's in your presence the path of life the blueprint to life is in your presence and in your presence there is fullness of joy and at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore and so we thank you as we go forth in healing as we go forth in deliverance as we go forth in prosperity, and we go as we go forth in restoration, as we go forth in taking back what the enemy stole. Your word says, All your promises are yes and amen. You have already said yes to whatever we would have need of today, and it is our responsibility to say amen. So be it, we will seek and we will find in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said, amen, 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 amen. Come on, one more time. Give the Lord a shout today. Not by might, nor by power, but by the spirit of the living God. Amen. Good things are happening to you. Restoration is coming to you. And remember this. Delay does not mean deny. Amen. Weeping may endure for a night. It may, it may not. But the word of the Lord says joy is going to come in the morning. Amen. And it's your morning time. Amen. Because the word is alive in you. And wherever the word, amen, is being lifted up, it's a new day, it's a new time, it's a new season for those, amen, who are actively walking and living in the word of God. Well, this is the last uh, message on laboring to rest and just by way of, um, just by way of review, uh, we said that uh, when you got born again, there was a transformation that took place in your spirit, in your heart. And that transformation, hear me now, that transformation uh, brought the kingdom of God into you. Now, we said that uh, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God has come into your reborn spirit. And one third of you 
is signed, sealed, delivered in the precious spirit of God. Your spirit looks identical to Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen to that. Your spirit, the real you, we are tripart beings. We are spirits. We have souls by which we contact each other. And we live in these clay pots. We live in these physical, material bodies. But when you got born again, your reborn spirit looks identical to Jesus. Amen. Christ in you, your hope of glory. Let me go over some of these scriptures. It says in Luke 17, 20 and 21, it says, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God comes not with observation. Neither shall they say lo here or lo there, for the kingdom of God is within you. And so we understand that the kingdom of God, amen, God Almighty has come to live on the inside of you. And so when you got born again, amen, you were sealed until the day of redemption. So there's, there's no such thing as being saved and then not being saved. And then being saved and then losing your salvation. And then being saved and, uh, you know, not being saved again. Either you're saved or you're not. Now, religion wants you to be performance-based. Religion says that God loves you uh, based on your uh, the percentage of your performance. If you perform as a good Christian, God loves you more. If you don't perform as a good Christian, God loves you less. We know this is a lie. From the devil, God loves all of his children, just like you love all of your children. Some of our children have been in trouble. Some of our children have been incarcerated. Some of our children have got themselves into a mess, but you love them no less. And if we are like that, how much more is your heavenly father, almighty God, how much more will he display his unconditional, unearned, unmerited grace and love towards us? God loves you. And it says in John 17 and 23, God loves you exactly the same way he loves Jesus. Now we're talking about laboring to rest because... Uh, you, <laughs> it takes a lot of labor in the word to, to have these things readily bubbling on the inside of you. <laughs> we have these things, but they're in spirit. Someone said, well, what that going to do? That don't do me no good. I need it out here. You know, that's why we labor in the word. That's why you pray in the spirit. Now I want to say this. You know, everybody needs to pray in the spirit. The Bible says uh, 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 over there in the book of Acts, in the upper room, when the spirit of Christ fell on the church, everyone spoke in tongues. The baptism in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues is an essential, it is an essential work of grace that you must take advantage of. It says in Acts 2 and 4, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in tongues as the Spirit uh, gave them utterance. Why is that so important? Because the kingdom is in you. Uh, all the riches of God's glory is in you and you've got to get it out. And when you pray in the spirit, Shonderebakuriandringi Malovosakadana Bohoso, Shender 
say, what are you saying? The word of God says, I'm talking to God. I'm not talking to you. I'm building myself up on my most holy faith. I'm stirring up the riches of God's glory that's on the inside of me. I'm praying my answer that I need. Amen. And as I ask the Holy Spirit, and Holy Spirit, show me what I'm saying. I have need over here. There's a sickness in my body. There's a there's a financial crisis going on in my family. There's a deliverance that I must have as I pray in the spirit. My spirit begins to pray along with the spirit of God. And as I'm praying in the spirit, the spirit of God begins to take hold of my infirmity. And he begins to pull me out of the bondage and the snare of the enemy. Praying in the spirit is very important. Don't let nobody tell you different. Well, I might not want to pray. Don't be ashamed now. This is God's doing. It should be marvelous in your eyes. Well, that just don't sound right to me. Well, there's a whole lot of things you done said don't sound right. There's a whole lot of things you done did don't look right. But this is God's doings. Amen. <laughs> and I guarantee you this. You start praying in the spirit. You start laboring in the word of God. I guarantee you, chains are going to be busted. Amen. Fetters are going to be loose. Amen. The weak are going to say they're strong. The poor are going to say they're rich. The crooked is going to be made straight. The rough is going to be made smooth. The valley is going to be exalted. The mountain is going to come down because that's what happens when God begins to invade a situation. Somebody say amen to that. Now I'm preaching up here better than you saying amen. Somebody need to wake up. Huh. Hallelujah. Church only for an hour. Some of y'all nodding in the car. Get out the car then. Glory be to God. Well, as I was saying, uh, the spirit of God, amen, uh, is on the inside of us. I'm talking about laboring to rest. I'm talking about you seeing manifestation of the kingdom of God in your life. Now, we said that the kingdom of God is on the inside of you. Now, remember in the Old Testament, they looked up. They looked up, right? Uh, Elijah goes on to Mount Carmel and he tells the people of God, he says, how long will you halt between two opinions? You know, the great law restorer, Eli Moses is the law giver, Elijah is the law restorer. And he says, look, we're going to have to have uh, some, some restoration uh, uh, in Israel. Uh, we're going to have to have some restoration uh, in the ranks of the people of God. And he says, now, now if Baal be your God, you go with him. He says, but if Jehovah is your God, you stop halting between two opinions and you hold fast to the true and living God. He says, but I've come here today on the mountain uh, because I'm going to contest Baal. I'm going to contest everything that's not like the true and living God. And the God that answers by fire, we're going to start worshiping him. And so it says that the prophets of Baal, they started early in the morning and they started doing their dance and doing their little jig and Baal never answered. And then it says they started cutting themselves and they, they started getting more crazy, but Nothing ever happened. And then Elijah started teasing him a little bit. He said, maybe, maybe, maybe he's going out on a, on, on a little break, man. Maybe he's touring. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, he, he begins to taunt them a little bit. And then it's Elijah's turn. And all he says is, Lord, send it on down. And it says, the fire comes from heaven and it burns up the sacrifice. It even burns up the rocks around the sacrifice. And it says the people begin to shout. 
Jehovah, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. And I said that to say, unless you and I begin to understand that we labor to rest, to get the kingdom of God that's in your heart uh, to manifest itself on the outside, you'll begin to vacillate. You'll begin to take in uh, uh, doctrines of devils and seducing spirits. You'll begin to get an itching ear to the things that have no redemptive value. But if you begin to plug in to the kingdom of God, amen. If you begin to pray in the, and I, I'm going to say this, if you begin to pray in the, now when I was coming up, you know, I was taught that there was uh, speaking in tongues went out with the apostles. And, uh, you know, all people are doing is getting emotionally uh, uh, stirred up. And as they get emotionally stirred up, they begin to, to speak this gibberish. But we know that's a lie from the devil. You know, I, you know I, I've noticed this. Some of the greatest things that you will need in your walk with Christ, the devil will have an erroneous doctrine to, to, to try to steal that from you. He tried to steal speaking in tongues from the people of God. Uh, he tried to steal prosperity from the people of God. Why? Because, uh, you know, they're so, so valuable. They're so important. God, John said, John the beloved, the one who uh, they could not kill. <laughs> you remember John the beloved? You know, it says that they tried to boil him in boiling oil. <laughs> That's some kind of death, right? And they put him in boiling oil and they brought him up. John says, I'm in the spirit of the Lord's day. Y'all can't do nothing with me. <laughs> they put him back down. They brought him back up. And John's is talking to them. And uh, uh, finally, they can't kill John and so John says they set me off they took me to an island called Patmos and he says I was on the island of Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ and John the beloved who, who I believe was the, the closest to Jesus he said in 3 John 2 above all things above all things he said, it's been revealed to me above all things. It's the Father's desire that you prosper and be in health even as your soul. How do we overlook these things? Religion. Religion said, well, the Lord wants you to be broke. What's that? How's that going to bring glory to God? Religion says, oh, God wants you to be sick. He might be teaching you something. Well, then how are you going to be a witness in bed? Amen. And sometimes we just take these little religious uh, 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 things and we don't even really think about them. They're of the devil. And if you're born again today, amen, you need to be thanking God for the baptism in the Holy Spirit that you need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. I'm not talking just to the people here. Uh, those uh, on Facebook, on the internet, you need to be back. When are you going to ask God to do for you something more than what you already had? And why are you so, so, so uh, uh, accepting when you know there's more to get. Because you got a religious mindset. And you got to tell that thing. You coming out in Jesus name. Well I don't know about that speaking in tongues. So I know about it. I'm trying to tell you. And you hear that the Lord wants you to hear it. Because he wants you to go further. They say well. I, I know people speak in tongues. I don't see what. Because they don't use it. Now, if you got it, you need to use it. If you don't have it, you need to get it. I'll say that again. Thank you for asking. If you have it, you need to start using it. If you don't have it, you need to get it. If you have it, you need to start using it. 
If you don't have it, you need to seek it. If you have it, you need to start using it. Most people don't pray in tongues till they come to church and uh, somebody say something or they hear their favorite song. Hey, bah, 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 bah. Sound like a little motorboat trying to. Bah, 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 bah. Or sound like a lawnmower. Bah, 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 bah. That's all they do for the week. I got my little. Bah, 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 bah. No. And Paul, the Apostle Paul said, I speak in tongues more than ye all. And if you read, you know, <laughs> everybody wants to go through and read up on, you know, what the Bible says about uh, 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 don't speak in tongues, you know, if you're in a crowd or, or don't speak in. No, nope. the Apostle Paul says if we're speaking in tongues and someone who does not have the understanding comes in. You know, they might think we're crazy, but that's because they come from the outside. But we who are on the inside, we know that we are praying in the Holy Ghost and keeping ourselves in the love of God. We are building ourselves up on our most holy faith. And if you don't understand that, you need to go back and begin to read the book of Acts. You need to begin to go and begin to read in the epistles and see what God is saying. The baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence in speaking in other tongues is one of the main is one of the main resources that we have to bring the kingdom of God, to bring the glory of God, to bring the power of God, to bring the forces of righteousness that are already on the inside of us into physical tangible manifestation and if you have the baptism of the Holy Ghost and you won't use it, you are depriving yourself of a blessing that is standing right in front of you. So you say, well where, you know, I've been wanting to get this, I've been trying to get that. It's right on the inside of you. And as you pray in the Holy Spirit, the wisdom of God is going to be downloaded into your understanding and you're going to hear a voice saying amen you're going to hear the spirit of God saying this is the way walk ye in now I got off on it <laughs> I got off on a little tangent there but you know we got all these folk baptized in the Holy Ghost not using it and, 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 and wondering why you know where is my manifestation amen it's in the spirit the apostle Paul said your supply is in the spirit. Uh, Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1. The apostle Paul said. That there's a supply. In the spirit. Uh, verse 19. Philippians 1 and verse 19. He says. For I know. That this shall turn to my salvation. Through your prayer. And the supply. Of the spirit. Of Jesus Christ. There is a supply for you today. But it's in the spirit. It's in the Holy Ghost. It's in the kingdom of God. It is not seen by your physical eye. You can't touch it with your hands. You can't hear it with these ears. But there is a supply for you today in the spirit. That's why Paul says walk in the spirit. And that's not a spooky term. Walking in the spirit is just walking in the word. Walking in the spirit is walking in the word. Walking in the spirit is walking in the word. And when you begin to walk in the word and you begin to pray in the spirit, you'll begin to you'll begin to reap that supply that God has for you in the spirit. Amen. So we said that uh, when you got born again, your spirit became identical to Jesus. Christ in you, your hope of glory. Christ in you, I use, I use that scripture a lot. That's Colossians 1.27. To whom God would make known 
What is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. God's on the inside of you. Christ is on the inside of you. Amen. First Corinthians 6, 17. He that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. He that has been joined unto the Lord is one spirit. If you ever got born again, you are born again. God says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. <laughs> you know, David said in the Old Testament, he said, uh, if your mother and your father, the closest people you can ever have, he says, if your mother and father forsake you, he said, the Lord will take you up. You know, the promise of God is so remarkable. You know, God is so true to his word, but we have to understand these things are in the spirit. And we have to bring them out of the spirit through the word of God, through prayer, and through the weapons of our warfare, which are mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. Now, I, I, you know, I seem like I'm all over the place, but you stay with me. Uh, one of the first things you need to do when you're seeking God about anything, the first thing you need to do is praise him. First thing you need to do is thank God and give him praise. It says in all things, amen, you know, we are to thank God and everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you and I. Whenever you have a situation that arises, the first thing you need to do is begin to praise God. Oh, glory to God. Oh, Lord, I thank you. 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 Not because the situation is good, but because God's going to, he's going to turn it. He's going to turn your morning into dancing. He's going to make this situation work for your good. Amen. Because praise begins to manifest the presence of God. Psalms 22 and verse 3. O oh, thou art holy, O oh, thou that inhabits the praises of his people. God inhabits your praise. When you begin to praise God, when you begin to thank God, in spite of your situation, here comes the presence of the Lord. Here comes the presence of the Lord. And Psalm 16 says, in his presence is the fullness of joy. And then Nehemiah says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And so when we begin to praise God, we bring his presence. And when his presence comes, there's a manifestation of joy or new strength comes into your life. And that strength lets you know, amen, the battle's not yours. It's the Lord's, but he's going to give you a great victory. Somebody say praise God for that. So we understand by way of revelation, by way of the spirit of God showing us that we're blessed, we're healed, we're delivered, we are loved unconditionally uh, with an everlasting love, we are prospered, amen, and all these things are on the inside of us, they are a spiritual reality, that must be, we must become good miners in the kingdom of God. You know, the miners go down, you know, into the earth and they bring out, you know, the ore. They bring out the iron, you know, they bring out the things that, that, that are very uh, lucrative and that are, are, are very usable uh, in the earth. But they, they go in to the ground and they bring it out we are to go in the spirit we are to go in the word of god jesus said in john 6 63 my word my word is spirit and it is life the word of god and praying in the holy ghost 
helps you to go into the spirit and get the wisdom of God. Because according to 1 Corinthians 1 and 30, Jesus has made known unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. We have these things on the inside of us. Amen. And when we begin to move into the spirit, the wisdom of God, the understanding of God. Amen. The things that we need begin to come up into our physical material world begins to get downloaded into our mind and we begin to operate in these things which bring us victory <clears throat> so i said all that uh as our uh introduction this morning <laughs> but i want you to understand that the grace of God is so rich towards you that uh, he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness and you are precious to God and that can never be revoked there is nothing you can ever do to revoke the favor of God from your life why is that because when you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, everything that God gave Jesus, the Word of God says we're heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. In actuality, people, our covenant is with Jesus. Jesus' covenant is with God the Father. But when you got born again, Everything God gave Jesus, he has given to you. Remember when Jesus came up out of the Jordan and the, 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 the heavens opened and the voice of the Father said to Jesus, You are my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. Well, when you got born again, the voice of the Father has said to you through the word of God, the scriptures testify of this, You are my beloved Son. You are my beloved daughter in whom I am well pleased. You are highly favored. You are blessed of God. And this blessing is irrevocable. You are the favored of God. You are accepted in the beloved. It, this is what um, it says in Ephesians 1, 4 through 6. According as he has chosen us before him. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Accepted in in the beloved now that word is only found two times in the new testament and uh it's found in luke 128 it says and the angel came in unto her and said hail thou that are highly favored the lord is with thee blessed art thou among women so what the scriptures are testifying to is that when the angel came to Mary and told her, you are highly favored. The apostle Paul says that you and I have been accepted in the beloved. When you got born again, you became highly favored in the eyes of God. Now, uh, somebody said, well, if I'm so highly favored, how come I'm walking around here uh, without a job and, uh, and my house in foreclosure? Peace be still. You say, well, what, what, what do you mean peace be still? What you're going to do this week is you're going to begin to give yourself over to the word of God and to much prayer. Amen. Uh, if you're not baptized in the Holy Ghost, I want you to stand right here. Come on out here. When, when, when service is over, we're going to get you baptized in the Holy Ghost. And you're going to spend the rest of your week 
in the word of God and in praying in the Holy Ghost. And before money comes, many times you'll see favor. Before money, I know every, everybody looking for the money. Lord, give me the big check. Lord, give me the lotto. <laughs> but before money, many times you'll see favor. Say, what is favor? The landlord telling you, I'm going to give you two more months to stay here. Uh, you say, what? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to just give you two more months. I understand some things have transpired. I don't even know why I'm doing this. You know I collect my rent. But the favor of God will move and, and, and your landlord says, well, you know what? I'm, I'm going to let you stay here. Before money, many times you'll see favor. And before favor, many times you'll just have a peace. It's called the peace that surpasses all understanding. Will keep your heart and your mind and see when you you when you begin to get into the presence of God, you know it it begins to bring peace. Amen. When you get in the presence of God, the peaceable fruits of righteousness begin to come to your aid. And before manifestation comes, you'll begin to have peace. And you'll tell the Lord, you know what? I know I need money. I know I need a place to say. I know I need healing in my body. I know I need reconciliation in my family. But one thing I want you to do is keep this peace on me. Because, I, you know, it's obvious I can live without these other things for a season. But I can't live any longer without your peace. I have discerned in life. When I've been going through things and I put myself in the word of God, the peace of God will come out to me in the deep waters and surround me with a peace that I cannot comprehend myself. And that peace is the umpire that lets me know everything is going to be a devil. Devil, watch out devil. My peace has come. It's the peace. The word of God says the peace is the umpire. You know, we're in baseball season. <laughs> and the umpire is usually that big guy right behind home plate. And, uh, you know, the ball will come down and the umpire goes, strike! Strike! And whether the batter thinks it's a strike or a ball, three strikes, the umpire says, hey, you're out! And sometimes the batter, he'll try to go against the umpire. And usually the umpire is a big old guy. And he just puts his belly out. <laughs> and they can't even get to him for all that belly. And, he and, if he and if the batter gives him any more lip, the umpire says, you're out of here. I don't know what you're going through today, but I know some prophesying now, right now. Some of you are going through something, but the peace of God is on your life. You've been in the word. You've been mining in the word of God, and you don't even know why. You've got the peace that you've got. The devil is messing with your home. He's messing with your money. He's messing with your body, but you still have a peace. And I'm here to tell you the peace is that God's got it. He has got you and everything is going to work out for your good. I don't know if you're going to keep the house. I don't know if God's going to give you a new house. I don't know if you're going to keep the apartment. I don't know if God's going to give you a new apartment. But the peace of God is on your life and God's going to work it all out for your good. You are highly favored. And the word of God says that this is an eternal redemption. I don't know if you know what you got into, but you into God 
almighty plan of the ages for mankind. I know my time is up. You know, <laughs> uh, what, what time we got? Anybody? 1109? Okay, whoa. Well, somebody messed my watch. My watch. <laughs> my watch is behind. <laughs> Hey, it's a setup. All right. But uh, I'm going to close with this. I don't believe that any of us know when we get born again uh, how great this salvation is. I know, uh, you know, most of us, you know, we, we, uh, we come to the Lord, you know, for fire insurance. You know, <laughs> Lord, don't let me go to hell. <laughs> I know I'm worthy of it, but don't let me go, Lord. <laughs> you know, we get fire insurance, you know, but we don't really, uh, you know, carry out the calling. And that's why so many don't see the manifestation. And then, you know, some of us who have a little bit of it, we're criticized because we went in to the realm of the spirit and brought out certain things. And then, you know, folks say, oh, he's he just preaching for money or, or, you know, he's just trying to be a big shot or, or she just wants, you know, uh, you to come over to her prayer line or she just wants somebody to acknowledge her, you know, uh, of her gifting. And it's, it's none of that. It's that when you taste and see that the Lord is good, when you get a when you get a taste of whatever the enemy was trying to do to you, and God begins to turn it around. You know, remember the song the old folks used to sing. I I, I said I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I just couldn't keep it to myself. You know, when the goodness of God begins to invade your life, you can't keep it to yourself. You know, uh, the pastor, uh, Pastor Dixon, he can bear witness with this. You know, I moved back from um, the Midwest, and uh, I met Pastor Dixon at uh, my father's Bible school. My dad had a Bible school uh, institution in Willow Grove, and uh, I, I knew him, but uh, it just seemed like when when I came back from Ohio. Uh, our path just crossed, and uh, <clears throat> uh, Pastor Dixon was a big time. He was, he was big time. He was big time in the union, making big money, and uh, I was little time, <laughs> and starting a business with no money. And uh, uh, he was just so gracious at the times. There'd be days where, you know, I'm like, whoa. I don't even know if I'm gonna have lunch money uh, for tomorrow, and uh, he just come by and give me twenty dollars. You know, I didn't say nothing. He just said, "Spirit of God told me to give this to you." And uh, I'm saying this to say, many times your mess will become your message. I'm a college student. I have graduated. You know. I've done, you know, what, what they say to do, finish college. But I, I don't have a job and I'm broke. Now, I got to make a job. But I watched the Lord just begin as we went line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, begin to get in that, that little company and begin to stir things up and to begin to add his favor. And then all of a sudden, the lack begin to leave. The barrenness, the scarceness, the not enough begin to leave. And I'm so big on prosperity because my mess be has become my message. And I'm never going to stop declaring that God is a God who will prosper you because I've sat where you sit. And I have eaten where you have eaten. And I know God will turn it around. But there is a supply in the spirit. Then, you know, I got born again. I could stand from sundown, sun, sunset, sun, 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 
Sun up to sundown, never be sick. I get in at six in the morning, go to work at seven. Ha! Not sick. Got born again, I'm sick. <laughs> Got born again, I'm going into the ER. One surgery after another. Another surgery. Another surgery. And the bad thing about it, folk were telling me, God is trying to humble you. God is trying to teach you something. You know, that sounds good when you're standing up. But when you all stitched up and you all cut up and you walking through the hospital with those robes on with the back out, and you got your little, you know, your little little pole that they got the little thing. That, that, that's all good and fine while you doing well. But when you sick, that sounds ridiculous. And it was ridiculous. And it made me go into the supply of the spirit and get my healing. I'm just testifying. That these things are so. And so, today we stand on the accomplishments of Jesus. And 2 Kings 6, 15 to 17, you remember the story. Elisha, the king of Syria says, I got a problem. He says, every time I make plans, it seems like the king of Israel knows where I'm going. And he calls his people together and he says, tell me of life but the devil is a liar and we have a better covenant based on better promises and Elijah is so cool the, the, the young man says he comes into the tent and he says alas he says what shall we do and Elijah says son there's more with us than uh, that are with them and then he says, Lord, open up the young boy's eyes. And his eyes get open. And he begins to see all these horses and chariots of fire around them. And he knows now there's no way we can lose because there's more on our side than that is on the... There's more on your side today. There's more angels of God than demon spirit. There's more healing than sickness and disease. There's more money than deficits and barrenness and scarceness. But you got to get down in the spirit and tell the Lord thank you. Before you see any manifestation, you got to tell the Lord thank you. You got to praise him even in the midst of the lack, even in the midst of the sickness, you got to tell the Lord, I thank you that by your stripes, I am healed and, and, and sickness won't always be. There's a change of coming and it's not by power. It's not by might, but it's by the spirit of the living God. This burden is being removed. And this yoke is being destroyed. I testify to you today. Healing is yours. Nothing's impossible. Nothing's incurable. I don't care what you have. Even now, in the name of Jesus, I curse that sickness at the root. And I say it will bring forth no more fruit. I curse that poverty. I curse that lack. I curse it at the root and it will bring forth no more fruit. And this day you will see a lifting up. This day you will see a blade and it will go from a blade to an ear to a full ear on the corn. This day you will see manifestations of the Holy Ghost. This day you will see that God is your father and Jesus is your blood brother. And the Holy Ghost is working on the inside of you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. This day the kingdom of God will manifest out of your life. And you will see newfound 
manifestations of the peace of God, of the joy of the Lord, of his healing power. Amen. All that you need, he will supply. And it's yours this day. So lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory is coming in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. The king of glory is coming in today. Amen. Who is this king of glory? Amen. The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Somebody give God praise now. Come on, bless him. Come on, bless him.
up, glory to God, and get a free expectation of God's glory falling on you. Amen. And we're glad that you came to join 